Sup dudes, it's Snail. Okay, today we're going to be looking at some weird weapons that come with the mod Weird Weapon Pass. We actually had this installed for our mod gauntlet run, but we never had the opportunity to find them because at the time, I was focused on other things. What the f Hit escape. Oh my f So today we're circling back around and we're actually finding the weapons and putting them to use. Let's pick the BFC 95,000. It's a metal cat. I'm not exactly sure what it does. Oh, Jesus. Who's there? Now, in order to get access to the weapons, what you have to do first is you have to go to Diamond City, turn right, go into the dugout inn. Once you're inside, walk up to this table and pick up the note titled A Weird Scavenger Hunt. Read it, or just put it away. It's up to you, I'm not your dad. But the note does contain descriptions of all 150 weapons that the mod adds to your game. But it might be a good idea just to read through it and browse for anything that you might want to use. Now you're going to stay in the dugout inn and you're going to wait for the pop-ups on the left side to stop appearing. Now from this point forward, you have two choices. You can either do the quests to find the weapons, or you can just follow these next steps to get access to every single single one in a very convenient container. After the pop-ups are done appearing, leave the dugout in, then open your inventory and drop the note on the floor. Once you've dropped it, crouch, look at the note to interact with it, and then you'll have access to all 150 weapons that the mod adds to the game. So for our purposes, I selected a bunch that I really wanted to try out just based on their names, and I picked a location that I thought would be best for testing them, which was the Glowing Sea. Holy f I mean, that, this is a little terrifying. I'll just go in this direction. Now, I didn't realize that the changes my weather mod would make to the Glowing Sea would make it literally impossible to record any good footage there. What the hell happened here? But I still tried my best. Because the weather conditions were just so awful, I decided to set up camp and try to sleep the inclement weather away. What the f*** is this now? Eventually though, I just stopped caring and I started testing. So this first one is a fouling piece. Let's find out what it does. <laughs> it spawned a blue chicken. Did these chickens do anything, or are they just kind of there? That's right, the chickens don't actually do anything. In a different save, I tested their distraction potential, and even enemies completely ignore them. Honestly, this weapon was just bad, and the area around us wasn't giving me any sort of stability to work with for footage, so I decided to just leave for greener pastures. We moved to Quincy so that I can test weapons on some local war criminals. Oh shit! Oh my god. <laughs> First we tested Caps for Junkers, a tire iron that spawns an exploding car on enemies, and when it explodes, it gives you a few hundred caps. This one is great on small crowds for very obvious reasons. Hope you enjoy your spawned car. Oh, there we go, there's a new one. It was a blast to use it. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Once I was done having fun with that, I switched over to the Contra Fister. Oh, Jesus Christ! It's a power fist that spawns a symbol monkey that fires rockets in different directions. The perfect weapon for when the enemy is fixing for a fist in. So that was pretty fun, but it was time to test a new one. Next was a flare gun that spawns a crashing vertebrate, but it wasn't very effective since the highway was blocking its flight path. And this flamer wielding gunner was getting annoying fast, so I decided to use the next best thing. <laughs> Enough out of you. I took it back to Route 12 and I caught him like a level 3 Pidgey with the Nukemon Ball. I checked my inventory and I promptly put Here's him to work. Gunner, Lieutenant. I choose you, Gunner! Spoiler alert, he wasn't a very good Pokemon. So I just switched to the Propulso 5000. This is hands down my favorite weapon in the pack, and here's why. No idea what this does, but let's see, Propulso 5000. <laughs> He's hanging on for dear life. I don't think so, buddy. Bam! <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> get back up there. So we extensively enjoyed some ragdoll physics from our enemies before moving on to the next few weapons. I'm gonna go over them a little more quickly because they're a little less noteworthy. First, the corner pocket. There's something happening at her feet. I think it's, I think it's billiards spawning in. Let's see. Oh my god, I didn't realize the billiards exploded. 
What the f Next is the globulizing nucleator, which is a pipe gun that shoots bubbles, and when it shoots bubbles, it does this. Okay, watch this. <laughs> oh, see you later, buddy. Oh, God. We were getting some random close <laughs> encounters, so it was time to use the mortal claw bat. Oh, my. And last but not least, I had to test out the gravity hammer, which I'm yes. sure you can surmise is a gravity hammer. <laughs> Rampage! Where did he go? So I finished doing the Lord's work in Quincy and decided to settle down for the night back at Taffington Boathouse. My next step was to rest up and then go out and test some more weapons on some spawned in baddies. See, the area around Taffington is pretty bare, so I was hoping to, one, have a better arena in general to test weapons with, and two, I was hoping that using the more explosive options wasn't going to tank my PC as hard as it was to this point. And performance was going to be especially important considering I was going to be testing on Death Claw. So first thing was first, I spawn in one test claw, and I decided to perform a retest of the vertebird flare gun. Let's finally get that vertebird crashing in. Oh wait, no, please don't crash into my settlement. Please, for the love of God. Okay, I think it dodged the settlement, but that did not work as intended. So I decided to test the Let's corner pocket the again. Okay. Alright, enjoy those explosive billiards, buddy boy. That was... That took a little bit long. <laughs> <laughs> Out of curiosity, I tried to find its body, but I simply couldn't. So I went back and spawned a couple more just to be on the safe side. Six death claws. Holy fuck, that is a lot of them. Okay, let's see what sort of damage that does. It does kill them. Yo, this one's crippled. I wanted to end its suffering, but I also need likes and subs. So I tested the vertebrate gun on it again. This time it actually hit close enough to damage the other test claws, but it was still a really underwhelming effect aside from just how it looks, and this little fellow was still in pain. It was finally time for the last weapon. So it was time to spawn in a few more, except this time we're spawning in 10 of them. I'm gonna- oh my Jesus Christ! Shock and Awe is an airstrike marker you can use to make express deliveries of freedom to your enemies. It can be used from a distance, but it needs to hit a loving NPC in order to work. Come on, airstrike, come on! Freedom in progress, please, it couldn't come soon enough. Oh my fucking force. Sam, you can stop. The freedom has been delivered. Thank you for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to watch me become a Pokemon Master next time. Take care and brush your hair. I'm Snail and I'm out of here.